I, I discovered the, the, I sort of tripped upon this in 2009. Initially with media companies needing our services, media companies needed scale, uh, like everyone else needs scale for content. And so that was our initial world. And then a light bulb moment went off sort of in, in 2010, where I thought, well, if, we've been doing this for, if we're doing this for media companies, we can certainly do it for brands. Uh, and, and in some respects, brands need our help even more because they're not in the business of creating content, they're in the business of selling stuff. So what's the recipe for making something that goes viral? I guess going viral is what everybody wants. Yeah, I, I, I think the whole viral, I, I'm hoping that phrase goes away soon, frankly, because I, I think there's a little bit of a smoke and mirrors thing going on there. I think it, you know, what makes things go viral is the same thing that makes things be successful in the offline world. It's, it's frankly a bit of money, and it's a bit of luck, uh, and it's a bit of uh, sort of being in the right place at the right time. I think the things that have gone viral that you've seen in the past, there's a bit of an ad buy going on there, and there's a bit of uh, a concerted effort to push that thing forward. Um, lightning in a bottle doesn't always really happen. Right. Um, when, when Freshwire became involved in this, did you see, oh, there are actually some other companies trying to do what we're doing, or did you feel like, actually, we kind of got an edge on what's going on here? When we started in 2009, we had the field to ourselves, I mean, hands down. We had to actually educate a lot of our clients on what it is we wanted to do for them. Flash forward now, four years later, and there's some folks sort of nipping around our heels, but I think that the difference is uh, we're a bunch of media people, uh, and they're largely either technology people or agency people, marketing agency people, and the, different, the, the discipline is really, really different. The willingness of people to share. I mean, whether it's sharing on Facebook or even with video, Twitter bought Vine and, you know, people making these videos and sharing them yeah. with everybody. Um, how does that play into the overall strategy of what you guys end up doing? In some respects, it makes it easier because everyone becomes a content creator and everyone's comfortable creating content and everyone's comfortable having their faces or their images or their names, you know, placed online uh, for, for mass consumption. So the, our ability to curate content and create content, we have a much uh, deeper well to draw from. The, um, the, the story of the Super Bowl was the yeah. ads that weren't made for television, but the ones that popped up on Twitter. Sure. Um, Real-time marketing is a, a buzzword right now. Yeah. Being ready for that totally. moment on TV or whatever <laughs> uh, to have a campaign to, to take advantage of that in social media. Yeah. Um, is it easier said than done? It is uh, definitely easier said than done. Uh, I think that a lot of our clients, they tell us that we can give them more content than they know what to do with. Not because they have a difficulty um, having it match their brand or voice, but because, but because they have not quite figured out internally how to push this content through their own approval, legal, marketing systems. And there's a fight going on internally within brands over who owns this stuff. Is it, is it, is it corporate communications that owns it, or marketing, or sales? Uh, and that battle that goes on internally prevents a real-time exercise from happening. So the Oreo moment uh, that everyone talks about the Super Bowl is, is kind of the exception to the rule right now because you had an instance there where not only was their agency able to move quickly, but or the folks within Oreo were able to get it through their uh, system quickly.